Hi everyone, this is the Fat Man. We're going to be doing some interesting um, uh, photography today, something that people don't know very much about, and I'll try and explain some of the technical uh, things about the photography as we go along. We're going to be doing panoramic photography, and it's not just grabbing the camera and spinning around on one point. It's, far, it's quite a bit more technical than you'd think. We're going to be using our trusty Manfrotto 055 Pro tripod today. Um, these are a, an inexpensive Manfrotto, but they are very, very good. Not carbon fiber, they're aluminium, but they're quite strong and very, very, very sturdy. And you can do all sorts of great things with them. So I'm going to move that up to there. Now, the other great thing that I have is a Manfrotto, I'll call it a rotator, it's a panoramic head. Okay, the great thing about this panoramic head is that you can attach it to most standard um, tripods, like this Manfrotto here, and <coughs> we spin it on. But the great thing is you can adjust as to how many... Um, Ah, how many degrees you want each click to be. So we've got a little adjustment here, which is a lock adjustment. We just sort of finger tighten that just really, really gently. And every time we get to a certain number of degrees, we can actually feel it go click. I've set this one to six clicks, which is 60 degrees per click. And so that means we're going to get six photos for every time we press the button and turn it around. Okay, let's set it up. <coughs> Put the camera, take my tripod mount off. Um, we're going to put the camera on to this mount. Now, I've already set this up to what they call the nodal point. Now, the nodal point is the part of the lens. If you can imagine this, the light comes in from here, the light comes in from here. The nodal point is where the two beams of light cross and then become reversed inside the camera. Now that nodal point just happens to be directly over the center of the rotation. So that's why you can't have the camera set up in the normal position over here because you're going to get what they call parallax error. So what we're doing is actually rotating the image around this nodal point, which is about here inside this particular lens. This is a 17 to 40 wide angle uh, L series by Canon. Great lens. I use this for my real estate photography. And I'm just going to make it relatively straight. Give it a nice tighten. Make sure it's at 17 millimeters here and we're pretty much almost ready to start shooting. So <clears throat> we have the camera. It doesn't have to be an expensive camera, it just needs to be a camera that's got a lens on it. You need to have this Manfrotto panoramic head, noisy bird, pardon that, and a really good tripod that's nice and sturdy. The other thing we need to remember is we can't have the camera on automatic or P mode. Uh, the reason for that is that every time I turn the camera, we're going to get a different exposure. So, what I need to do is set the camera to manual and then come through and manually set up the, the camera for uh, what I would call um, a roughly slightly exposed, uh, overexposed exposure. Okay, so what I'm going to set it to is probably about, let's have a look, maybe 100 and a two hundredth of a second, change the uh, aperture to about f8 and I'm running ISO 200 at the moment and I'm running also something very interesting some people don't do this but I'm also going to be running the delay shutter now I'm going to set it to a two second delay as opposed to the standard ten second delay so that we can press the button and have our hands off the camera when it actually takes the exposure. So here we go. I'm running this on raw, auto white balance, 200th of a second f8. It's, it's a rather warm, sunny January day here in Sydney. And 
we're running six images. Now, I'm going to find one of those 60 degree points and just slightly tighten up the lock nut so that it clicks in firmly. There we are. So, here we go with the first one. Pressing auto, auto, uh, yep, auto um, focus. And then we're going to move it 60, deg ah, 60 degrees. Okay, now what I'm going to do is move the uh, panoramic head 60 degrees until I feel the click. There it is, there's the click. One more exposure. So that's two. Move it around again. Three. I'm going to have to get out of the way here in a second. Four. Five. And hopefully we won't get the, the cameraman in the way. Okay, so now we've taken six images and we're going to stitch them all together and we'll uh, go through that shortly in, um, in the studio. So what I'll do is, well this is the basics of the panoramic shot. You need a good tripod, you need a panoramic head. Now this is just one type of panoramic head. Um, they can range between uh, $100 and $1,000 depending on how much you want to pay. Um, you also then need obviously a camera and it doesn't have to be a wide angle lens, you could do maybe 8 or 10 or 15 shots for one panoramic view, then stitch them together. So what we'll do now is we'll go back into the studio and we'll show you how to stitch them together and then upload them onto the internet. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to um, use the Microsoft Image Complete Editor for this one. Hopefully you can see this in the screen. And we're going to import the six files that we uh, recently did. And this is all of them minus that one. So we're going to open up these Canon RAW files. It should take only about five or ten seconds coming from the server. And here you can see all of that barrel distortion from each of the six images. Now, obviously we don't want to see all of this dead area, so we'll automatically crop that out like that. And we're going to export it to the drive. In fact I did that wrong. We need to reduce the scale down to 45% because where we're going to be sending it to doesn't like anything more than about 6,000 pixels wide and this one's about 13,300. 13, so there we are back down to about 6,000. Let's overwrite this one again and should work out to somewhere about a couple of meg. Okay, so that's Microsoft Image Composite Editor, free from Microsoft, and it, it does a really good job of stitching images together, and you can see there are no um, errors from the, from all parallax errors there. Okay, nope, just going away. Now we're going to open up a great little uh, website called demander.com. Let's pull this down a bit so you can see it all. And once you've logged in, you just press on 360 degree view, load the image that you want to use, which is the one we've just stitched together. And uh, we're going to upload that. It's called Fat Man 2 for an example. And Panorama. Oh, there we go. Update. And it's uh, starting to upload. So we'll do a little bit of uh, magic here. We'll just wait until this is uploaded. And through the magic of the pause button, here we have the finished product. We can uh, zoom around, look up and down, uh, move in and out, and look all around us. So we can also embed this particular um, 
image, this um, panoramic image, into a website. Um, let's make it full screen. Oh, you can't see that, but my goodness, it looks good. Okay, so that is one of the simplest ways to make a panoramic image um, using a little bit of hardware, um, a decent tripod, a panoramic head, and pretty much almost any camera you want, as long as you want to uh, stitch them together using uh, Microsoft Ice. And uh, that's about it. So until next time, this is a fat man saying see you later.